Star Wars Battlefront is the PERFECT Star Wars game. When it comes to looking really good, that is. DICE has nailed the aesthetic of Star Wars, and if I were to describe my experience in Battlefront, it'd probably be something like this. Or, uh... Or something like this. Or something like this, where I'm taking in the scenery, oh my god, this looks gorgeous, and then this idiot flies around the corner, and... As usual, DICE and EA have decided to focus on the graphics and the look of Battlefront, I mean Battlefront, instead of fine-tuning the way the game works. Now, don't get me wrong, the gameplay is incredible. It's so much fun to run around and gun down the other soldiers with precision and ease flowing from one kill to the other, and then something like this kills you. This bumbling, self-destructing idiot droid just took me out with the same military precision as a well-trained scout trooper. Or when you make this jump without sustaining any damage at all one time, and then you try to make the same exact jump again, and somehow your character dies completely. And tell me, DICE, how am I the only one home right now playing on my own high-powered Colorado Wi-Fi, and the server suddenly starts lagging crazily near the end of the match? Now this lag issue is only sometimes a problem with unstable servers with up to 40 players running around, but uh, come on EA, work with me. I mean, do I have to pay $16 more to play on servers that are more stable than this? Can I pay a fee and get like a, like a server list or something? I mean, if this was a feature in Battlefield where you can bring up the server list, why isn't it in Battlefront? I mean, what do you expect me to do? Play in, offline in the AI missions mode? <laughs> Yeah, right. All right, Donkey, I'm sorry, but I got to call you out on this. My 10 hours of playing this game, I have yet to play as a single one of the heroes. Meanwhile, I'm over here getting a hero pickup like once every three matches. The hero pickups are pretty random and well hidden, but any active player that's storming the front lines and covering as much ground as possible is bound to find one. The campers and the pulse rifle users are the ones missing out on the hero chances. And it's not like the heroes are that great anyway, I used to think that the lightsaber users were godlike until I made it my sole mission to take out any hero in sight and discovered how weak they are. Play Luke for the first time and you'll know the true definition of feeling exposed and incredibly short-reached. The only thing you can rely on to survive is blocking and force pushing, but it takes more than that if you want to be effective and rack up kills. The trick is attack from the back, stay out of the path of the hero tornado that comes raging through your ranks and keep getting cheap shots into their back and sides. Because most heroes don't truly take into effect where they're being shot from, they just know that they're being shot. If you're going against a halfway decent Boba Fett player though, you might as well just take your own life so he doesn't get the points for slaughtering you. And I actually have nothing to say on Han and Leia because I've only ever protected Leia as one of her personal guards when she was on the field, and no one plays Han for some reason, though he's probably the best. Well, he certainly has the best voice actor, if you know what I'm saying. You are a fool! It's not that I don't sympathize with my main man Dunk though, I mean there have been plenty of times where my hero pick was just straight up stolen from another player when I was like right in front of it about to grab it or it would just like disappear as I'm looking at it. But you don't need to be Han Solo or Boba Fett to feel like a badass. Pulling off a successful run and gun kill streak in this game lets you achieve some sort of like next level euphoria. It's this constant stream of controlled chaos that's so so addicting and it keeps you playing it's like a drug you can't wait to get another five second fix of adrenaline pump badass and thank god there's little to no downtime i mean you jump into matches just like that it's not like battlefield where i die and i'm staring at a menu for 17 seconds before my timer is up and i can jump back into the action for a couple of seconds before i get sniped by somebody across the map and i'm back to looking at that blue screen again in this game when you die you're very briefly taken back to the blaster and respawn selection screen and when you respawn, you come out of the gate shooting immediately. But did I mention that the reloading in this game is completely broken? Did I mention that the dogfighting in this game is the funnest thing ever? Honestly, the funnest time that I had with this game wasn't with the ground combat, it wasn't with the boring hero duels, the offline missions, none of that. The TIE Fighters versus the X-Wings flying over the planet, that, oh my god, is so fun. From a technical viewpoint, this game really is a work of art though. From the astonishingly beautiful graphics to the sound effects and the score, it's incredible. The only thing holding it back from being excellent, almost perfect in fact, is EA reeling back the chains this game is shackled to if you don't fork up $50 to pay for the rest of the game. I mean, this demo is good. It's almost as good as the, the demo that we had to pay for for Metal Gear Solid V. That demo wasn't $59.99. Now, the first DLC pack that was supposed to be one of four came out while I was playing this game. 
and all you got was the ability to play as Greedo, a guy who died immediately at the beginning of episode 4. Or you could play as the fish guy who happened to sit next to Lando on the Millennium Falcon while they were attacking the second Death Star who said a couple of lines of dialogue and a couple of maps on the planets that we already had. That's what you're releasing in your season pass? If anything, that just proves that it's more worthwhile to wait for the Battlefront Complete Edition that will undoubtedly come out after the last DLC pack releases at the beginning of 2017, and will have all the DLC and be much, much cheaper than buying the unfinished product as it is now with the season pass for a total of $110 and some tax. And that's the cold truth. <laughs>